Yes, sir! What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ, coming to you live with another video, man. Now, check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on, let me mute this real quick. This video is about the best center build in the game for winning games. Now, I don't think that you'll get a lot of argument out of anybody if they say that the rebounding, um, the rebounding slasher or the slashing rebounder guy is one of the best center builds in the game. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it is dominant. You can get rebounds, offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, you can put back, you can do everything that you wanna do. But two things that you're going to do without any doubt. You're gonna clog up the paint, and you're also going to, um, in some cases, you know, cause cause congestion. Now, if you like Man Man Grindhard, like his new dude that he made, oh my God, that dude is OP. Ain't no doubt about it. That's one of the best center builds in the game. But, but, just hear me out here. I'm not gonna doubt that anything with rebounding and slashing is one of the best center builds in the game. It's automatic two points, but, this guy right here, so that's the punch, is what we're gonna call that. This guy is the counter punch. And because a lot of people have gone that way of making the centers that are that are rebounding and slashing, this guy, the two-way stretch five, is the perfect counter punch. Because I don't clog up the paint on offense, and I'm gonna, you can't just dunk on me on defense. Now, you can score on them, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying it makes it difficult for people to do anything on you in the post and, and they don't just get a whole bunch of crazy animations on you. That's all I'm saying. Anybody can score on anybody in this game. I'm pretty sure I could bag somebody down and score in the post with this guy on this game if I have enough time or if I just force my way down there and try to get two points. My thing is this. When you're playing on the park, if you're going to force the ball to one person, then, hey, good luck. Because that person is going to score and you're saying that we're going to beat you doing this. And, hey, it is what it is. Hey, some people have done that to us. Some people have been successful. Some people haven't. Some people scored a lot of points on me, but we got threes when they got two. So, you know, it is what it is. It's give and take in anything you choose to do in this game. But when you do this guy, check it out. Let's check out his, uh, let's just check out his stuff, man. All right. Standing layup, obviously, is what you want to be doing because if you do, if you do the driving layup, you're going to miss. I mean, most, most times, unless you do the, uh, the, the reverse layup or what have you, you got to time that perfectly. You don't have any dunking. That's not where you shine. Mid-range, I mean, standing in and out of the paint, everybody got some, gets some mid-range, so that's not even really a huge advantage. This is your biggest advantage. You get to shoot threes, right? So you're pulling your guy out of the paint. Automatically, what this does is, like I said, most centers on this game that are the driving and, and, and rebounding guys, on defense, they're just gonna try to stay in the paint because they don't wanna come out of the paint because they wanna try to help on defense. And on offense, they just wanna go into the paint. So I am, I, this build literally addresses both things that they want to do. And since the majority of the centers in this game are that, it's like the perfect counter punch. So they're not just gonna be dunking on you over and over in the paint. They're gonna dunk on you sometimes. Like I said, they force the ball to them and they just, they wanna waste 20 seconds off the clock, that's fine. But um, it, it is what it is. But you stop a lot of the cheese in the paint with this and on offense, you spread the floor for your team. Now, it's at the cost of, of not being able to get an automatic basket. That's the only thing. How big is that to you? Um, but if you got a slasher on your team, then that's an automatic basket anyway, because I've pulled your center out of the paint and my slasher's gonna go and get the automatic basket anyway. So it, it, it it's, it's give and take. Or if you got a shot creating sharpshooter, anything, anybody that can dunk or take somebody off the dribble, it opens it up for them. So you can get automatic baskets. But um, you also have that three ability, ball handling, negligible, uh, Passing, pass vision, 71 pass accuracy, 50. I mean, it is what it is. You get a fair amount of post offense. I wouldn't even rely on it. Rebounding goes up to 70. I think it'll max out at like 73, 74, something like that. But this is where you really kind of shine. You get, you got steals that goes up to 70. Blocks, are, blocks. Uh, what's that, 78? I wish it went up to 80, man, but it sucks. Uh, and I'm 73, three, uh, 315 too. Vertical. I get a lot more vertical, so we'll see how that goes. Lateral quickness, I still have a little bit more to go on that. Uh, speed is trash, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Acceleration, but but dude, the speed and acceleration really even matter in this game when you got 60 overalls that can keep up with you up and down the court and just dunk on you or just throw the ball in and do all this crazy stuff. Like, I don't even think, these this right here, stamina doesn't matter really, speed doesn't matter. 
Strength doesn't matter. These last four categories don't even seem to matter because 60 overalls can keep up with you then, what's the point? But anyway, if you got a patient point guard that's gonna come up and, and be slow with it and do all that stuff, I think you can do fine with this build. The main thing is, you're not gonna be able to get automatic rebounds, so you will have to find your guy and put a body on him every single time. They are gonna get fluky rebounds on you, but like I said, this is not what you're built for. You're just built for a counter punch. You wanna make them think about it when they wanna go up in the paint on you and dunk on you. And the other thing that you wanna do is that you're just drawing them out of the paint and making it easy for your guys on offense. Now, you got some point guards that do just like to throw it down there and get bucket after bucket and then you kick it out to the wide open guy. It just really depends on how you want to play. But that's why I made this guy because he's like a perfect counterpunch with the guys that I play with. And in pro in pro am, my goodness. Now, for the part, I can see why people wouldn't want to go with this because, you know, they don't want to get dunked on all the time and they might want to do the dunking. I'm not even mad at you. Uh, you know, I got catch and shoot on goal. It's maxed out. Um, pick and popper. Uh, I don't even really use that. I got limitless range maxed out. Uh, dead eye almost maxed out. These will be maxed out the next time you guys see them. But this is the thing. You get silver rim protector. Um, you get defensive stopper so you can defend. You can defend guards. If somebody gets by, you can chase them down. Uh, you got bruises, so you're just sucking up people's, you're just straight up sucking up people's um, stamina when you make contact with them. Uh, you do get brick wall, uh, you get put back king, which is useless because you can't go back up with it. I don't know why they give you that. Why they give you posterizer, I don't know. You just get chased down less when you got posterizer. You get, you get more dunks going to the hole, you get glue hands. I think I get that on silver maxed out. Uh, quick reflexes, uh, free throw ace, obviously, pick and roller. Uh, picking uh, pickpocket. I don't even have pickpocket because I don't do a whole bunch of reach and I need to get that. Tyler score up and under specialist, which is pretty much useless because you're not going to really use that. Charge card, lob city finisher, which is useless. Uh, mid range dead eye and difficult shots. And, uh, you know, clutch performer, enforcer hardened, all that stuff. Does enforcer still? No, 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 no. Expressive. I don't want to express it. I was hoping that um, uh, defensive anchor is the one that I feel like you should get. If you're a center, I feel like you should get defensive anchor, but you know it is what it is. But like I said, the two-way stretch five is one of the best centers in the game. Like I said, no, you get no argument from me. If, if people are saying that the slashing rebounder or the rebounding slasher is the best center in the game, then I'm not arguing with you. But this guy is the best center in the game for another reason because he's the counter punch. Is, does that, am I making sense? Because so many people have gone the way of clogging up the paint on offense and dunking on you, and then on defense, they don't want to come out of the paint. You know, this is the perfect counter punch because you can't just back him down and dunk on him over and over again, unless, like I said, that's just you guys' offense and they're just gonna force the ball to you. You're just trying to, just trying to go after somebody. I mean, it is what it is. But, um, but at the same time, you can't just sit in the paint on, on defense because you have to come out and get him or he's gonna get a lot of free buckets. I'm sure that there's a lot of stretch fives out there that get buckets, but every time I play, I'm probably always playing against a sub or something like that. So I rarely see any action with this guy. The only thing I'm doing is putting him out the paint so man man can drive and, and, and do anything or sauce can get open and uh, and shoot the ball because Really, nobody nobody leaves me open just because they know who I am. And I'm not saying I'm like that. They just know that it's Jay Easy and he's got a stretch five. We're not going to leave him open. People always head hunt me. So I don't get to do as much as I would like to on him. And then, like I said, on offense, they do try to force the ball to him. One out of 15 or 16 games, somebody will just get me and there's just nothing I can do about it. Like my man, uh, I forgot what his name was, man. Hold on one second. We're going to give him a shout out right here. Like he gave a dude came out here. And uh, where yeah, where yeah, where yet? Uh, right, ah, uh, Swift. Hey, he came out there and gave me that motherfucking work with his post score. But you know, he was like, yo, hey, I was like, I thought he was head hunting me, but he was like, nah, man, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan. And he, like he said, he just said, I'm a big fan. I just wanted to play against you. And I just want to say thanks for accepting my, accepting my uh, request, been a sub for a while. And hopefully, uh, you know, we can get some parking in together. See, I thought he was head hunting me, but he was just coming out there trying to play, dog. He dropped me the fuck off with his post scoring guy. Uh, I think he had a post scoring rebounder. So I don't know what he got. If you need a center, add him because he's nice. But when he played me, I learned so much playing against him because he was so good at post scoring. Nobody would do that to me again because I know what to do against it now. But by the time I figured it out that game, 
game, it was too late. But I like when I play against people like this where they're not cheesing, they're just using their archetype. And I, and it's like a chess game, I gotta figure out. I don't even know, I think I got sold that game or something like that, I don't know what happened. But uh, hey, let's see what he was saying, man. He was just like, oh, I, I can't hear because my, my PlayStation went off. But pretty much he was just saying, yo, I've been, a, I've been a fan for a long time and I just wanna play with y'all the next time y'all go out there, man. That's pretty much what all he was saying. But anyway, um, that's about it, man. This is the perfect counterpunch. If your guards can get you the ball, or if your guards will dribble you open and get you the ball. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes you're just a decoy in the corner. You're gonna have to know that. But in Pro-Am, it's also a perfect build because number one, people people definitely not just gonna dunk on you in Pro-Am. That's not gonna happen with this build. This one right here, it might happen with other builds, but this one, nah, that's not gonna happen. They're not just gonna dunk on you in Pro-Am when you take it to another level. And obviously, you're probably like, like, Y'all gonna see me and Man Man grind hard with his center and my center, just straight controlling the paint. Man Man got the Duncan Slasher where he can get all the rebounds and I'm gonna play all the defense. So I'm gonna play all the defense and hold people up and block shots and do all that. He's gonna get all the rebounds. And then on offense, it's a perfect compliment because I'm gonna stand outside and it's gonna force a one-on-one -on -one with him down low. So if he's down low, I'm not in his way. And so, and, and, and then if they do double down on him, he's gonna kick it out to me, and it's gonna be cash. Pipe it up, I got them pipes on reserve. So it is what it is, man. Like I said, it's, it's, it's the perfect center for winning games for several reasons. But the main reason is because so many people made the Duncan rebounder that you take away both of the things that he has a huge advantage on. Now, if they set pick and roll and roll to the hole and people don't know how to pick up and all that and they get rebounds even after that guy misses, hey, that's a whole nother story. But somebody gotta learn how to box out or we gotta learn how to switch better or we gotta learn how to hedge or whatever. But you know, you're not gonna win games automatically just because you have it. You still have to know how to play it. And because like I said, you're, you're at a big, a big disadvantage with rebounding, but it is what it is, man. I like this guy, uh, Big Smooth Sam Perkins. I like him. I think that I think that it's the best center for me, um, and it, and it, like I said, it just really takes away the two things that somebody wants to do. Now, if you really want to get funky with it, you might can make a defending, uh, a, def a driving and dunking defending, uh, you know, a two way, a two way, uh, what do they call it? A two way athletic finisher like my dog D made, and you can really get funky with it because nobody's gonna dunk on you and you get the automatic basket. So, those are the three archetypes I think are probably the most overpowered counter punches in the game. This is probably the most overpowered counter punch in the game if if your guy can occupy the other center and then get you the ball. But uh, I'm sure this works for other people, but it, I, I, people always hear hunting me on stream when I stream in the morning, so nobody's gonna leave me open. They already know what time it is. We shooting almost 60% from three. Why would you leave me open? So I'm just a straight up decoy most of the time when I play this guy. But it is what it is, man. I do my job, we still win a lot of games. I gotta get up out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you guys think. Are you understanding what I'm saying that this is the perfect counter punch? It's not really, the perfect center. It's just a good. It's just. It just takes away what the other. What most of the other centers in the game are really good at. He just completely takes that away. Like I said, the automatic basket is invaluable because we play with our uh, Hasbro's today. And if you're watching this video, uh, uh, Trey is streaming right now, so go on over there and check that out. But uh, you know, that having that automatic basket is invaluable. But when I play with my dog Tino, Tino was the driver. And then we had two shooters. Or oh, when we play with Man Man and Man Man driving and me and Saucer shooting, it's crazy. Like, they eventually have to stop Man Man from dunking on everybody. He kicks to me. I most of the time, they know they know he gonna kick it to me. He'll kick it to me. I kick it up to Sauce at the half court line. He busts. Bang. So, you know, it is what it is. And whenever we can get defense together, we all we always unstoppable. But, but uh, how often does that happen? Anyway, I got to get up out of here, man. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Hope you guys understood what I meant about this being the perfect counterpunch and the uh, and one of the best centers in the game for how to win. But like I said, if you say the dunking and uh, the driving and dunking rebound is the best, uh, you get no argument from me because that thing is super overpowered. It's super nice to have on your team. And um, like I said, but when you take that completely away from somebody, then you see, you know, this, what this guy does, which is what this guy does, you see how good people really are. Nobody's gonna beat you unless they're probably, if they're a three, if they're a team of three that comes, then they will probably they can probably still beat you. But if it's randoms and you take away their driving and dunking rebounder pretty much all the way, they don't stand a chance. Anyway, I gotta get up out of here, man. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, 
Let me know down in the comments what you guys think is the best center. Like I said, I'm, I will concede that the driving and dunking or the driving and defending uh, center is the best. But uh, like I said, this guy, he just, he, he it's, that's definitely a place for him. If you can bring two of them together with him, it ain't no doubt about it. I ran a paint protecting my dog Darius. He had a he had a pure paint protector, and this guy in pro am. Oh my God, they didn't even want to see it. It was the same thing on defense. Nobody was dunking on us, and they had two driving and dunking centers and uh, rebounding. They had two of them, and we had these two. Nobody was dunking on us on de on on uh, defense, and on offense, Darius was just going to work inside. And when he couldn't get it, he'd kick it out to me. Trey Ball money game. Anyway, I'm gone, man. Y'all take it easy. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Hope you understood what I'm trying to say with this. It's just a counterpunch if you know how to play it, if you can deal with not being able to dunk and, um, and having to work to rebound. But I'm gone. Y'all take it easy. Peace.